Hey all you addicts out there, welcome to another tutorial by Addicted Fishing. I'm Jordan Kanegi and today we're out here on the river and talking how to drift fish for salmon and steelhead. Drift fishing for salmon and steelhead is probably one of the most effective and very oldest ways to try to catch these salmon and steelhead in these fast moving rivers. What we're gonna start with talking about today is our rod selection. Rod selection is huge for this kind of fishing. What we have here today is a nine foot Okuma Guide Select Pro, eight to 17 pound. The key in drift fishing is to have a very, very sensitive rod. So not a very long rod is key. We wanna have something that's from eight and a half feet to about nine and a half feet, not much longer than that. Because the longer you go with your rod selection, the less sensitivity that you have. So the Guide Select Pro is a wonderful model for this because it's very light, it's very nice, fits very well in the hand. It has a lot of sensitivity that travels from that braided line all the way up to the forefinger where you're holding onto this rod and feel every little rock and piece of gravel and stick and fish in that, in that run that you're fishing. So your other option for rod setup and probably the most popular way for fishing a drift fishing setup is with a bait casting reel. Using a nine foot rod with your bait casting setup, once you've graduated up away from the spinning gear to casting with one of those bait casters is really one of the more effective ways to fish these setups because of the way the rod sits in your hand. You're able to thumb line out to let that drift go down the river and also the way you're holding it in your hand allows for a lot more sensitivity transferred from the rod tip down to your hand, feeling that bite as it goes through the hole. The Helios Baitcaster C3000 or C4000 are a great option for fishing with this nine foot setup with the 40 pound. So keep that in mind, graduate up to that rod, it works very well. We have this line with a Kaimar C40. This has 40 pound P-line braided line on it, Teflon coated. I like the high vis so you can see where you're fishing as you're drifting down through these boulder gardens and rock gardens that you're gonna be fishing with these type of setups. What I have here on the end of this 40 pound is a bumper. This bumper is not as key as far as length. I like a lot to use a bumper with that braided line because you don't wanna be snagging up and breaking this braided line off in the fishing holes because it ends up creating a big balled up mess of line that you can't get rid of and you keep snagging on over and over and over again. So having a good 10 to 15 pound to 20 pound bumper on the end of that 40 pound test is key so that if you do break off, you're not creating a mess in the bottom of the river. What we have here at the end of our 20 pound bumper is a three-way swivel and I use a piece of pencil lead. There's a couple different options that will demonstrate for tying this pencil lead on or using a Dave's Tangle Free. One of the most revered methods is using a piece of line off the bottom of this three-way swivel, just a piece of 20 pound test with, a, with hollow core lead that you put on that line, squeeze tight so that when that lead gets stuck and you're snagged, all you do is pull back and that lead slides off and doesn't break off your whole setup. So that's very key to this, is choosing the kind of lead that you wanna use, the kind of, of weight that you wanna use to get down into the strike zone. On the end of this here, I have 12 pound P-Line Fluoro SS fluorocarbon here, all the way down about three feet. Anything over this, and we'll go over this dispute over flossing and snagging with a drift fishing setup, the thing that separates the two is leader length. So I like to go no less than about three feet, no more than about four feet with my leader length with whatever kind of setup I have on the end here for my business end. So I have about three and a half feet of 12 pound fluoro all the way down to a nice little orange soft egg. Anything works down here. One of the most classic ones would either be a yarn ball or a corky of some sort with a little bit of yarn put on my hook here with an egg loop. So. What I'm doing here for my hook is either a number four or a number two hook. Bait is another really, really popular way to drift fish is by using bait, whether it be sand shrimp or coon, coon shrimp or a glob of eggs. Here I have an egg loop on my hook, but all I have on here is yarn and my soft egg. So this is what I'm gonna drift fish today. This setup is really the best because it's not very long, has a lot of sensitivity, and it allows you to get down, get through the strike zone, and back up before snagging, which is very nice. So the bumper is key. You do not want to leave a line of mess in the river. Stay tuned, we're gonna show you guys how to fish this hole. So now we're gonna talk about what drift fishing water is. How to identify a spot that you would want to drift fish. What's key about drift fishing water is that it moves faster than most of the water in the run. What we got behind us here is our iconic drift fishing water. We have a fast current coming out of a rapid, slowly slowing down into a tail out, but the top part is deep, fast, and swift. 
Why we want that kind of water is so that we have enough resistance from the current to drag our drift fishing setup down the river bottom because we're not in the boat. We're drift fishing from the bank here. And even if we are in the boat, we want to be able to drag that presentation with the water current down through that run without getting snagged or hung up on any of the rocks or boulders. So you want to pick a run that doesn't have really big boulders and you want to pick a run that actually has some pretty good current speed to it. You want to be able to drift as long as possible without getting hung up. So what we have behind us is one of those runs. What we're going to do now is turn around and we're going to cast into this run, into this fast water, which is going to take all about the angles. We're going to talk about the angles and how you need to cast at certain spots to be able to fish through that given run. So the key to the angles that you use when fishing through a run with a drift fishing setup is about casting to where this, your gear will get down to the bottom and make a good presentation, again, from your 45s. You're gonna fish this almost like a spinner, 45 to 45, without, with actually letting a little bit of line and feathering line out at the end of your drift to continue that drift further down. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna identify what I have in front of me. I have nice fast water here, I have really slow current on the inside, so I'm gonna wanna start my cast about halfway across the river. I'm gonna go middle to far with this, not so much with the close. The close is gonna be really hard to make go down the river because we don't have any, any water current, any surface current to actually take our line and pull it down the river. So we're gonna start about halfway out in this run. The key as you start to drift fish and it, as it hits the bottom is all about your rod tip angle. You always wanna have it at about a 45 degree angle over the water surface, following your line all the way down. What a lot of people do wrong is that they keep their rod tip in the exact same spot and let the line work down the river. And that's completely wrong. We wanna be able to follow our setup down the river and walk it along as it goes in front of those fish and wait for that bite. The line has to be just taut enough to feel almost everything. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna turn around. I'm gonna cast at about 45 degrees up river to make sure that this gets down because it's a pretty heavy current. 45 degrees up river gonna land, I'm immediately gonna close my bail and reel up my slack until I feel bottom. I found bottom now, I'm fishing. I'm gonna keep my rod tip at a 45 degree angle over the water, slowly feeling every little rock and bump as it goes down the river. I'm waiting for that fish to grab. As it comes down to the end of the run here, I'm gonna slowly point my tip back down to the river, letting it finish that drift and waiting to feel any snags. When I do feel a snagger, I feel like I've fish this all the way to the inside, I'm gonna lift my tip up and I'm gonna reel it back in. Now the key to what we just did was that we followed that bait, that, that drift fishing setup, all the way down the river with our rod tip and kept the taut line. You don't wanna keep it too tight to actually swing it through there and you'll feel it come off of the bottom. You wanna be able to choose the amount of weight you have by having different sizes of Dave Tangle Freeze or this hollow core and or the hole punch lead like I have. I have different pieces in my pocket right now to match the weight that I need for this run. So I'm gonna start with a lighter weight and I'm actually gonna work my way up if I can't feel the bottom. We wanna be able to feel the bottom and have our gear working at about a walking speed through the hole, no matter the amount of current. That's the beauty of the drift fishing setup is that you can slow your presentation down in a really fast current and pick fish up in spots you didn't think they lived. So what we're gonna do it again here, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna cast a little bit further all the way to the other side of the river here. I'm gonna close this bale again, reeling up that slack until I feel bottom. Tip at 45, walking it, going exactly with the pace of my gear, straight down the river. At this point, I'm actually even gonna open my bale, give it about five feet, and continue that drift to cover a little bit more water. And I'm only gonna do that when I have enough surface current, like I do here on this inside. So I'm bringing my way down to the end of the drift, there it got stuck on bottom and I'm gonna reel it in. So last but not least with this drift fishing technique, we're gonna talk about the business end of it, the bite, when that fish actually grabs it. Cause that's probably the biggest question I hear from people is what's it feel like when a fish grabs a drift fishing setup? A lot of times it does not hit it like a freight train. It's more of a trout bite. It's not like you're catching it on a spinner or on a plug or something like that where that fish is aggressively swimming over and grabbing your lure or bait. What the fish are doing with this drift fishing setup is they're picking it up much more like a trout. That setup is coming by them, you're drifting your bead or your eggs or your yarn down past these fish, they're moving out from behind the rock they're behind, grabbing whatever your setup is and going back to where they were. So a lot of times all you feel is a very soft trout bite on the tip of your rod. You always want to set the hook when you're sitting here drift fishing because you need to be able to stick that fish once you feel that trout bite. What I don't mean by trout bite is a big whomp whomp 
and feel that really big smack because what happens a lot when guys are drift fishing is they you dr actually drift your setup right across the back of the fish whether the fish bites or not what you don't want to wait for is a very hard smack and kick because a lot of times that's you going over the top of the fish and them kicking away from your lure and, or excuse me your bait and actually hitting your line like it's a strike what it's always going to be is you're either going to feel nothing you're going to be drifting along and you'll start to feel a slight head shake and it'll be instant fish on, or you'll feel a very sensitive trout bite. That's why these sensitive rods, these shorter rods are very crucial for this kind of fishing because you need to be able to feel that very subtle bite. The key is when you get and you start graduating into drift fishing, you need to memorize the bottoms at the holes that you're fishing or else you're gonna constantly break off. So you know where the big boulder is, you know where the stick is, you know where the, the pile of sand is, and you memorize that as you work down through the run with your drift fishing setup because it's all off of feel and sensitivity. So when these fish bite, it's very light sometimes, very sensitive, give a good hook set and enjoy that fish on. All right, everybody, so now that we've talked about our rod setup and selection, our technique and the kind of water we want to fish, we're going to talk about the terminal end of this, the business end, the kind of tackle we want to have on the end of our drift fishing setup. So what I have here next to me are four of my very favorite setups that I like to drift fish with that work very well. You can kind of tweak and, and customize each method that you want here with different colors and different things, but the idea of each of these setups is what I like. So first off, we have what you guys have already seen, basically fishing a Yarny and a soft egg. Leader length is the real important part of all this. So on each of these setups, my leader is about three or four feet long, not any longer than that, or else you're really not in the strike zone and you stand a lot better chance of actually just snagging these fish rather than drifting it in front of them and having them bite. So the yarn ball, Yarny, soft egg, one of the best ways to catch a fish, one of my favorite, one of the first things I'd throw into a hole. It's a very intimate and very uh, unintrusive way to try to get at these fish. So second option, second best thing I would say to go with is with a bead. Same thing I have here, I have this bead pegged about three finger lengths, four finger lengths above my hook. Number four hook, nice and light so that drifts through and never gets hooked on the rocks. Again, on about a three, three and a half, four foot leader right in there. So this color, you can fish 14s, you can fish 12s, you can fish 10, eight, six, all the way down to whatever size you want of bead. And it works very well because it makes the, the presentation go even slower than your actual bobber dog setup. All you have resisting against your line is your line and the current. So you actually can slow down your presentation and keep your, keep your bead or your, your setup here in front of those fish for a lot longer than you could bobber dogging. Third tactic here is on a little bit bigger hook. This one I have a number two. Here I have just a normal peach colored corky with a little beta eggs, real natural presentation on a number two hook. Again, on about a three and a half to four foot leader. So very, very good way to do it. You can peg this, this corky up above your bait, but a lot of times you can let it slide freely on your line and sit right on top. And this is probably one of the more old school and, and more effective ways to try to catch a salmon or steelhead. The bait that you use on this really matters only on preference. You can use a sand shrimp, you can use a coon shrimp, you can use a beta eggs or whatever you want, or all of them. So this setup here with a little egg loop on that number two or number one hook works really, really well for catching these steelhead. And now last but not least, it's our wacky worm. What we have here is a mad river worm of any one of your color selections. I got a whole pocket full of them here, but what I do here is I rig this either with a worm feeder or I just feed the hook through the body of that worm. A lot of times you can add a bead or a, or a corky in front of this worm, but this works really well just the way it is. Drift fishing this worm, again, on about a three to a four foot leader, doing the same methods that we talked about earlier, 45 to 45, and actually dogging this worm along the bottom, having it float right in those fish's face and allowing them to swim up and grab it. So all these, all these methods work really, really well in drift fishing for steelhead and or salmon. So keep them all in mind, have all of them on you when you go out there. They all work just as well as one or the other. All right, everybody, we hope this video made it a little bit easier for you guys to pick up the concept of drift fishing. It's not something that's completely easy or the first thing that you should go to if you're learning how to salmon and steelhead, but as you get a little bit better and graduate into different styles of fishing, it's definitely one of the most effective ways to catch a fish. So keep that in mind. Use all this knowledge we've shared with you guys to get out there and catch these beautiful fish. We'll see you guys out there on the river.